Hello everybody, Sam Burr here. Welcome back to a little tutorial video for absolute beginners of this game. Now, I am aware that a lot of you guys who watch my videos are not beginners, but there are still quite a lot of people who are just buying the game recently and don't really know how to do a lot of the basics when they first get started. So let's talk about some of the different things, different mistakes beginners um, come across and also some solutions on how to fix them. But before we get started, you guys have homework, so don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to leave a comment for future videos or tutorial videos, things like that. And also the mods and asset list and my Instagram is linked below if you want to check those out. But before I get started on all of the tips, why don't I introduce you to the lovely land of Portburg. So we have Bortburg, we have Kortburg, we have Dortburg, and of course, Zortberg. Lovely names, very, very um, unique, very classical, and like nothing else at all. So why don't we check out tip number one. So that is basically, you don't want to make your highway traffic go into a small urban area. You want to keep your highway traffic at a good speed, right? You want them to get from point A to B quite quick. So if we go over to here in Bortberg, you can see that the highway traffic comes into a very populous area and you want to avoid this because if you look at the layout the highway traffic even though there's not much now because it is it is quite a small town but as it grows there's going to be more and more traffic so you can see that there's a lot of uh, traffic lights for example here and here there's also going to be a lot of people walking across the pedestrian crossings um, there's going to be lower speeds there's also going to be general cars and trucks that are just turning from point A to B and going all over the place. So you want to keep your highway traffic and your ordinary traffic separated um, because once you mix them together it's going to be a lot slower than just a normal highway. And you also want to avoid the, the grid-like shape that you can see right here because obviously that's going to be a real issue because they stop go stop go stop go so that's really going to lower your traffic flow percentage so that brings us to tip number two you might want to create some kind of bypass so you could do something like this now of course you can do different sizes of bypasses whether you want to continue it as a highway or you want to use some kind of lower main road that is up to you but for ex for this example uh, I'm just going to use this main road not a highway but just a main road that still kind of acts like the highway so by doing this it diverts all of that highway traffic away from your town urban areas and that way you're splitting up your urban traffic from your highway traffic and as a result your traffic flows straight through they can get from point a to b a lot quicker and they can also choose where they want to get off the highway so with the first example all of the traffic was forced to go in the one the one same spot but with this example with a bypass you can see traffic has all different options where they want to go where they want to get off the highway where they want to get on Tip number three is you want to make sure that you leave enough room for expansion. So what I mean by expansion is upgrades of roads, um, putting in more facilities, more infrastructure, things like that. You just want to make sure that you have enough space to do all of this. Um, maybe you don't want to make your first town really compact. You want to spread it out a little bit to make it easier for um, general upgrades in the future. That's really up to you. Uh, that's a very quick point, but it's definitely something that you need to think about. So really think about what you want to do. So you need to plan ahead, which is tip number four. Now, when I say plan ahead, it could be something like adding in larger roads that you know are going to be busier in the future, or zoning areas in specific places that you want to have more traffic or you want to have less traffic, um, or even just implementing earlier infrastructure for whatever reason or whatever type method that you want it's definitely important to think ahead you don't have to create some kind of huge plan what you want to do but at least have some kind of general idea so you can think about okay i want this area to be a really busy downtown area so i'm going to put larger roads in this area and then this part over here maybe i'm going to want really no traffic at all so i'm going to create no large roads over there so just think about those types of things but if we look at the map now, um, if I were to make a change, so if I thought ahead, I didn't really think about 
this map too much but if I were to plan ahead I would put this huge industrial area it's called uh, Kortberg I believe I would actually put it possibly over here what that does is it makes all of the industrial related traffic not need to go further than the residential areas so all of the highway industrial traffic happens earlier before the residential traffic happens if that makes sense it's a little bit hard to understand it's because the industrial traffic is quite heavy um, so you just want to get that all out of the way before it really gets into your city so that's why a lot of the time you'll notice in bigger cities uh, a lot of industrial areas are on the outskirts because they don't want all of the trucks to have to go all the way into your downtown or inner city areas Okay, tip number five. Now, a lot of you guys who know me are probably going to roll your eyes at this, but roundabouts are your friend. I know roundabouts, roundabouts, roundabouts. I always mention them. Um, in Australia, they're very, very useful. A lot of people don't get that, but they are quite useful for areas that have a lot of traffic. So instead of always doing um, big intersections or big four-way, like, I don't know, whatever you want to call it, T intersections, big crossing intersections, do a roundabout because what happens with a roundabout is instead of making you wait at traffic lights, a roundabout makes you go at a slower speed, but you are still going. And as a result, it does make traffic flow a lot easier. Now, it doesn't always work in every case, but it does help a lot of the time. So definitely try to implement um, roundabouts in intersections that are quite busy, and hopefully you'll see a result. And the sixth tip that I want to give is the more roads available in your map, uh, the better it's going to be because it actually gives your sims more options to get from wherever they want. So instead of making them all go on one main road, you can basically give them, I don't know, five or six different options to get from wherever, um, wherever on the map. So more road connections from different suburbs, different little towns, whether even if it's um, public transport options, but the more options they have, the less traffic it's going to be on one specific area because like I said they have more options to get around the map. So that basically wraps up these little tips. Uh, this is definitely more traffic oriented so in the future if you would like different types of tips for service buildings or um, I don't know happiness levels things like that let me know and I'll get onto that and um, but it all depends on the demand for that so thank you guys for watching don't forget to hit that like button and um, yeah, I'll see you guys very soon. Bye guys.